Welcome, I'm Dr. Sayeda Desile. This is my Redefining Femininity series. I've been interviewing beautiful people, men, women from all over the world, different backgrounds, different cultures, different influences, to find out what is happening with femininity and how it's evolving. And today's speaker, I am really deeply honored. I have deep love for her, has very unique perspectives to offer us. Barbara Mux Hubbard is an evolutionary woman, a pioneer at the growing edge of change. At the age of 90, she feels newer every day because evolution is getting newer every day. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Barbara. It's so amazing to have you here. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you for what you're doing, Saida, for so many women. Thank you. Oh, I feel so honored. Barbara, I want to jump right in. Uh, I'd love to know what femininity means to you personally. Well, femininity means to me the power of expressing the new. Mm. Because we give birth to the babies. And I've just been with a friend who's had a newborn. And his name is Atlantis. So this little newborn, he's like 10 days old. And he's there. And he is trying to go somewhere. He's like angry. Oh, hey, what happened? And so the feminine gives birth to the new, both physiologically with the baby, but I think she gives birth socially and spiritually because I think the feminine is no longer just the person who gets married, has babies, it takes care of the babies, is a grandmother, and dies. It seems to me the feminine is giving birth to the new woman. woman. And that. that she has inside her what I call regenerative. She's no longer menopausal. She's regenerative. Whew. She's no longer saying, oh, I'm not the egg. I'm not giving birth to eggs anymore after 50. I'm the egg. Wow, I love this. So Barbara, I mean, you have journeyed far and wide in so many dimensions all over this planet through many ideas, many experiences. And I'm so curious, the description you just shared with us, was there a special moment that happened or was there a point in your journey where that definition became like really clear to you? Yes. It's when I got depressed mm. after having five children and taking care of the house, the husband, the dogs, the cats, the garden, and loving everybody. And I graduated from Bryn Mawr in 1951. I, 1952, we were told, have as many babies as possible. I'm the last generation to be told that. So I did that. I had five children in, you know, 10 years. And I got depressed. So then I said, well, what is wrong if I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to do? And I went around Lakeville, Connecticut to see if I could find anyone who was happy. <laughs> there wasn't a single person in Lakeville who was genuinely happy. They were comfortable, they were you know, doing good things. So then I said to God, the so-called God, What's wrong with me? What, what's, what's missing here? I'm an American, do your best. Why am I not happy? And what I discovered through Abraham Maslow is that every self-actualizing person who's fulfilled has one thing in common, mm. chosen work. Mm. They find intrinsically self-rewarding end of service. Now, I loved my husband, I loved my children, I was a good mother, but it wasn't my vocation. Exactly. And when I realized that I, with, with this wonderful family and everything that I was doing, it wasn't my vocation, that I found the cause of the depression. Oh, interesting. No vocation. Then I said to God, okay, what is my vocation? I had no idea because I didn't even know the word vocation in relationship to what I was to be doing. Yeah. And I will just tell you very briefly, when I read Abraham Maslow, first thing, every self-actualizing person has 
chosen vocation. Mm. They find intrinsically self-rewarding. Well, motherhood actually wasn't my th- chosen vocation. Mm. Next thing, Teilhard de Chardin says, evolution goes to greater consciousness, greater freedom, more complexity. And I thought, I'm going to greater consciousness, more freedom. So I realized, I am, you are, we are evolution in person. Amazing. So through that kind of like, uh, it was a beautiful offering. I mean, it was pure kind of love and tradition and home and babies, but there was obviously no fulfillment and your spirit was feeling like a calling because it wasn't enlivened. Right. And so through that exploration um, and, and getting in touch with your soul's calling, in a way it allowed you also to have this greater perspective on femininity and our ability to birth not just babies but birth ideas birth you know communities so then i saw myself because i'd had the five children and i was now giving birth to myself yeah and i would like to say for all evolutionary women giving birth to yourself capital s is not such an easy matter Mm. because the self is new It's not like my vocation is I'm going to be a doctor or a lawyer or an Indian chief. It's I'm going to be a unique self. Yes. My friend Mark Gaffney, I'm a unique self that hasn't existed before, and that's the person I'm supposed to be. Well, when you say that, how do you know your unique self? Hmm. And here's what I have discovered. It's to an inner impulse of desire. Well, that's where we meet, isn't it, Barbara? (laughs) It's an inner impulse impulse of desire to co-create not all by yourself i have a new project but for the people whether it be in a love relationship or in a co-creative love relationship that's what turns on the feminine co-creator i love it so i have one more question uh before we go and i think this one we can spend the bulk of the time in um, so this is question came from observing all the dissonance, kind of like divisive conversations that are currently happening between, you know, masculinity, femininity, blah, blah, blah. We don't need to go there because I'm not that interested since there's a lot of people covering that. What I am interested in why you're here is what are we evolving into and what should we pay attention to when it comes to healthy harmonious dynamics between masculinity and femininity what should we pay attention to well this is a kind of startling statement but i think we're becoming a new species Mm. and the new species of humans particularly the feminine new human is is motivated by an impulse to be more to love more to create more than has been done before she can't say I want to be a good lawyer a good doctor a good Indian chief she's saying I want to be something that is guiding me but I'm not sure what it is so she's a co-creator and if she has a relationship then with a man or a woman or whatever that relationship is a relationship of joining genius rather than joining genes So she can have a joining genes to create the babies. But beyond that, she joins genius. Ooh, sounds delicious. (laughs) Like, I think we did that together, you and I. Because you had this impulse about the meaning of desire, and so do I. And we had it in slightly different language in different ways. So this conversation with you Saida came through a joining of genius of the of the two of us is that true absolutely so maybe absolutely. There are other women out there who will feel they're joining genius with us now mm. and yeah. if so we're grateful yeah and so some of what you're suggesting to to allow a because there's healing that's needed obviously and there's deeper conversations that need to be had is to, um, it sounds like first be aware of the impulse, right? The, the yearning, the desire that's calling us forward to the deeper calling and two, be aware and notice and celebrate when there is a joining of genius 
right. whether it's with as someone that appears as a man or as a woman, it doesn't matter. As a human being to human being, this joining of genius is in part a great um, invitation for right. us to take this whole conversation to a whole exactly. new area. So there's first saying yes to the impulse. Yeah. Then there's an interim thing before joining genius. You've got to ask the impulse to reveal itself to you. Mm. so that you get more of an understanding of the nature of that impulse inside you because it's unique. Yeah. It's not, oh, I want to be a doctor or a lawyer. Yes, maybe. But see, there, every woman who's at the growing edge of her own life, particularly after 50, when she's not having any more eggs, just say, I'm the egg. I am entering regenopause. Oh, I love it. That's amazing. <laughs> I, I, I am yeah. in, I am personally in post regenopause now because I'm 90. <laughs> you're, you're like, you're in a whole other stage of evolution. And I, I don't even know if it has a name yet. So we'll have to join Genius to, to figure that out. So there are going to be men watching this. Would you say that it's the same for them to like pay attention to their impulse, to pay attention to how they join genius, et cetera? This is a human being yes. experience. I got this name from Neil Donald Walsh. And when he said to me, he was doing my autobiography. And he said, Barbara, what about the men? You're always talking about the women and what they get. And I said, well, you know, what, what tell me, Neil, what about the men? <laughs> because you hear a lot more of the women transforming than the men. And he said, that's, that's really true. But he said, there's a new word that I made up for the men. And he, this is Neil Donald and his name is andropause, oh, since yeah. I have genopause. So andropause for a man is a man who might have been really good at the regular doctor, lawyer, Indian chief to be successful. Or maybe he's not even successful, but he's trying. What does successful mean for the man? Mm. Is it just to make more money and be very good at the existing system? Mm. Or does it mean he wants to be partnering with the feminine co-creator? Like I am with Mark Gaffney. I have, I have a whole mate. And we've, we were, I'm writing a book about the shift from role mate to soul mate to whole mate. Whole mate, as in W H O L E. W H. So a whole mate person is somebody motivated from within to give their gift. Yeah. And can't do it alone. Mm. So if you're whole mating, you're finding somebody else with a gift. And I could say this with you: it's a form of whole mate. It's not yes. necessarily only man and woman, but the whole mate, if it goes the whole way. Oh, can can we pause there? You join genius. Yeah, I want to pause there because there's so much fear and, and dissonance and hatred and all this weird stuff that's happening. And I think it's really crucial, this idea that we start walking in life, understanding and discovering actually there are whole mates just awaiting to connect with us. There's opportunity to, as you said, join genius and i really love this because you know i've interviewed a lot of people but this is a very unique uh take on the situation and i think it's important because like you said you're an evolutionary woman and you're on the growing edge of change and i think these these ideas have not really made the mainstream yet and i really that's part of inviting you here is i want more and more people to understand and hear this and i know you've already have a big crowd but there's there's just always more people no, that need to I, I want to tell right? you, I'm working on a book with Mark now called The Future of Relationships. Yeah. And it goes from role mate to soul mate to whole mate. I love it. I cannot wait to read that. <laughs> We're just, I'm just editing it right now. Perfect. Well, I'm really, really grateful for you, Barbara. Is there any last words you want to give the listeners, particularly around the issue of healing uh, the masculinity, femininity, first within ourselves, obviously, and then within our um, communities? Well, the word is suprasexual co-creation. Yeah. Got it. If nature invented sex, which was a big invention after millions of years of no sexuality, which was to procreate. 
Mm. I think nature is inventing supra sex to get us to co-create. I really like it. <laughs> it's so good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Barbara. Mm -hmm. It's always very exciting to, to speak with you. And for the listeners, uh, please stand by. I have a little offer for you. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. For, for this, for what you're doing, Saida. Thank you. You're invited to join this amazing conversation. Soon I'll be doing a training, redefining feminine power, and I want you to be there. So click the link that comes with this video to join. Just for joining, I will be giving you a free downloadable gift, so definitely watch out for that. And if you can't make it at the time that the training is happening, don't worry. Because you've signed up, we'll make sure you get the replay, all right? So all you need to do is just click on the link join the conversation and let's redefine feminine power together.